session of the thank you for joining us for this third session of the Afrohun Regional Virtual Communities of Practice on Emerging and Reemerging Infectious Diseases. We truly appreciate it that um, you've made time to join us today. And we're really looking forward to an interactive session where we will all be learning together and teaching each other on trachoma. We look forward to you engaging with us. And we are looking forward to starting in the next, um, I believe, one minute or so. Yes, we'll be didactic presenter are in the house. And so we are ready to um, get going. Allow me to invite Mark to welcome us all to this session. And um, yeah, invite us to go through the housekeeping slides. Mark, over to you. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Mark Yambayamba. Uh, country manager for uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's uh, my honor and privilege today to be uh, as HR of the community of practice, welcoming you all to this um, third session of um, uh, Afrohun Regional Community of Practice on emerging and uh, re-emerging infectious diseases on the African continent. So today we will be talking about a very interesting topic, which will be uh, dealing with cross-border collaboration uh, which is really key to sustain uh, gains in trachoma elimination in Kenya. So we are very happy to have all of you today and we hope you will enjoy this session. So with this, uh, on behalf of Afrohun and um, uh, all the team that prepared this session, I really, I'm really sure that you will enjoy the session and uh, I wish you a nice session and we'll be happy to have this session very interactive. Uh, if you have questions, we will be happy to have them and respond as uh, much as possible. So you are warmly welcome to the session and uh, enjoy the session. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you, Mark. Um, let me see if I can get my video on. Uh, yes, there. Yeah. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark, for giving us a warm welcome. So um, members, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, thank you for making time again for this um, session, making time to join us in this session. Really looking forward to a wonderful interactive session um, where we will learn about trachoma, see what advances Kenya is making, get to hear from um, what other countries are you know, working on the strategies that are engaging in um, to make sure that um, uh, trachoma stays at bay. And so we're looking forward to getting um, your input in this session. That said, um, allow me to just indicate um, for our French listeners, kindly use um, the globe function, the interpretation function to switch language. Um, so you can switch using um, that button at the bottom kindly, sorry, let me just do that. Yes, um, use that, click on the interpretation and choose the language that you'd like to hear. Um, and that will be, you know, uh, to hear the interpreted language only, click mute original audio and you'll get the language of your preference. So kindly do that. Um, to get live transcription, uh, click on live transcription and choose show subtitle. And then the caption would appear on the screen. To close the caption, click the hide subtitle. So that would be able to show you, um, the, to give you the transcriptions. If you're using or you're logging in from your device, um, mobile device, um, look at the meeting controls and then tap more at the bottom right of the mobile uh, phone app and top right in the tablet app. Then tap language interpretation, select the language you would like to hear and then click done. So if you're using um, your mobile phone, again, just look at the, uh, control, look, uh, tap at the uh, controls button, the more button at the bottom right of the mobile phone app and top right in the tablet app, then tap language interpretation, select the language you'd like to hear and then click done. So that would be able to give you the opportunity to switch languages um, as well. 
So allow us to um, just request that um, for us to have cordial interactions and for us to engage um, uh, formally in this particular session, we request that um, we rename ourselves with a proper name and organization. So kindly um, let us rename ourselves with the proper name and organization. Sometimes you get participants logging in as iPhone 10. Uh, now you're wondering when you want, you know, to ask the participant to say something, you're like iPhone 10, kindly unmute. <laughs> so we'd like to call you by your name and, um, you know, refer, refer to you, um, you know, in the organization that you're working in. So if your bandwidth allows, please keep your videos on. Um, so this is the, this is the communities of practice. So we want to see each other if your bandwidth allows. Kindly keep your videos on. If it doesn't allow, then we truly understand. We request that we keep our mics muted at all times, unless we are speaking, so that then we do not have interruptions or we avoid interruptions and we are able to communicate with each other um, clearly. So we have two functions that we can um, communicate with during the sessions. We have the Q&A feature um, for questions regarding the topic and the topic or presentation, kindly use the Q&A function. And then if you want to ask anything regarding IT, logistics, or certificate of attendance, then you can chat um, Echo IT or to troubleshoot any Zoom problems, then you can use um, the chat function um, to do that. So for question of the session, so it is important for you to fill um, that um, two, three minute uh, survey so that then you can be able to get or obtain your certificate of attendance. And again, we value feedback and it will be important for us to get that feedback so that then we can be able to improve um, in the next sessions moving forward. So kindly share your feedback with us in that survey so then we can be able to effectively make um, improvements as to how we are able to coordinate these sessions. On data, we want to indicate that AfroHoon will collect registration, participation, questions and answers, charts, comments, and poll responses. We indicate and we assure you that your individual data will be kept confidential. And we want to say that this data will be used for reports, maps, communications, surveys, quality assurance, evaluation or research, and to inform new initiatives. So we assure you of our confidentiality on the data that we shall collect from this session. Finally, I want to share um, the agenda for today. So this is what we shall be looking at. We have the introductions and how to keep, uh, housekeeping items and um, the opening remarks, which you've already gotten from uh, Mark. Then we'll have our case presentation and um, a bit of discussion in the case, uh, or rather on the case. So this is going to be done by uh, Dixon Kyoko. So we are going to look at cross-border um, collaborations. Then we will move on to didactic presentation that will be done by Titus. Um, and, he's, and he's going to share with us the roadmap to trachoma elimination in Kenya. Then we'll invite um, discussions uh, for around um, 10 minutes or so uh, on, the, on the didactic presentation that will be done. And then we'll have a QA. and And then we will make our announcements and wrap up today's session. So members, again, thank you for taking time to join us uh, for today's session. So that is a brief overview of what we shall be looking at today. Those are the housekeeping uh, rules that we'd wish to abide by for this community, for this particular session. And we hope then that uh, we shall have um, some wonderful interactions and at the end of the session, we'll come out all the better. So thank you again. And um, we're looking forward to uh, interacting with you. That said, Allow me to invite um, one person who probably has participated uh, in session one, two, and three to probably unmute and say hi and tell us where they're joining us from as we transition to listening to our uh, case presenter, to listening to the case. Anyone who'd wish to open up, one of our participants would wish to open up and uh, greet the plenary and say where they're joining us from. I'm checking to see whether there's any mic that is open. I will, before I call on somebody, I volunteer somebody. <laughs> no one wants to say something. 
All right, let me let me ask uh, yeah, Williams, go ahead. Williams, good. I wanted to volunteer you. <laughs> oh, hi. I greet all of you. I'm Dr. Williams Guma. I'm right now located in uh, Koima district, that is the, the Albertine Grabin, the Midwestern part of Uganda. Thank you very much. Awesome. Good to have you on board, uh, Dr. Williams Guma from Uganda. Thank you. Um, let me see who else wants to say something. Gad Ruzaza. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Gad Ruzaza from Bara University of Science and Technology. I've been an, uh, an active participant, I hope. I, I've been a participant. People should give me marks <laughs> of, of Afrohun for quite some time. I'm grateful to be joining you, you from Bara University of Science and Technology in Uganda. Wonderful. Um, pleasure to hear that you've been with us all along. Thank you, Dr. Gad. Um, anyone else who, wanted, who wants to introduce themselves, kindly we invite you to also do that in the chat and let's know where you're joining us from. As now I transition to invite um, our case presenter, uh, Dixon Kyoko, to come on board and make um, uh, his case presentation. I request that um, we make the session interactive um, so that then we can be able to all learn together. Kyoko, um, you have the floor. Kindly tell me if you would wish me to share from my end or from your end, Dixon. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Wanjohi. Uh, my name is Dixon Kyoko. I'm the uh, Monitor and Evaluation Manager at the Ministry of Health, uh, Division of Vector Born uh, Neglected Tropical uh, Diseases. And uh, kindly, Wanjohi, I'd request you to share it from your end, kindly. Oops, all right, let me do that. My apologies. Let me just quickly, okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, th uh, thank you very much, uh, Wanjohi. Yes, uh, at least now I can be able to see it. Uh, I hope you can hear me, Wanjohi. Yes, we can, clearly. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so um, I'm going to present uh, my case uh, uh, on uh, cross-border collaborations uh, uh, on the elimination of trachoma uh, in Kenya. As you know, uh, trachoma is a, a disease that, uh, that is a, one of the NTDs categorized by WHO among the 20 NTDs. And uh, in Kenya, there's a prevalence of uh, NTDs so I'll uh, take you through what we are doing in Trachoma. And uh, in this case, we are looking at cross-border collaborations. Uh, next, uh, Wanjo. So uh, as you can see, uh, uh, Trachoma mainly affects the eyes. It's an infectious disease of the eye, uh, which is reversible, uh, which is irreversible, uh, caused by bacterium uh, chlamydia uh, trachomatis. Uh, Indicators of trachoma are trachomatous inflammation, uh, follicular and uh, active uh, infection. Uh, it is a public health problem in Kenya. And uh, Yoko, we are losing other 42 you. countries. And it responds to blindness. Oh, sorry, I think, uh, uh, can you hear me, Wanjai? Now we can hear you. And the rest of the team, you can hear me. Sorry. I hope you can hear me now. Yeah, we now can. we can hear you, yes. Yes, uh, so trachoma is a public health problem in 42 countries and uh, Kenya is one of them and is responsible for blindness of uh, or visual impairment of about 1.9 million people globally. Uh, based on the June 2022 data, 1.5 million people live in trachoma endemic areas worldwide and at risk of trachoma blindness in Kenya. We have about uh, 11 million uh, who live in endemic, county, uh, endemic uh, counties, and an estimate been blinded by the disease. Now, when you talk about uh, endemic counties uh, in Kenya, uh, remember Kenya is divided into counties, and uh, here we are talking about uh, Turkana, uh, 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 Samburu, we are talking about uh, West Pokot, uh, Kitui, and other counties that are in Kenya that are endemic for trachoma. Uh, next. 
Now, when you look at uh, the African uh, endemicity, uh, as indicated on the map, we have uh, uh, the first map is a baseline tier prevalence. And as you can see, the map uh, of Africa is shrinking with the uh, extreme uh, red uh, areas, pink areas uh, shrinking uh, from the left hand side of the map uh, to the right hand side of the map. And as you can see, the, uh, the numbers of trachoma, uh, people affected by trachoma are reducing. And this, this is because of the interventions that have been put in place in some of these countries. And uh, in this case, we are talking about Kenya. So if you look at uh, the first map, the baseline map, you find that uh, even in Kenya, the endemicity of trachoma is reducing. Next. Anjay. Now, uh, again, uh, if you look at the current TF on the left and the TT uh, prevalence maps on the uh, right, now the places where, uh, there's a map of Kenya, the places where we have uh, high endemicity of trachoma or high burden of trachoma along the cross, uh, along the border areas of Kenya. Uh, looking at Rukana, uh, we are looking at uh, West Pokot, we are looking at Samburu and uh, uh, other counties like uh, uh, like Kitui, though Kitui is not at the border, uh, but we also have uh, most of the counties that are affected by trachoma are at the border. And that's why uh, uh, we are looking at this cross-border collaborations as an important component in the elimination of trachoma. Uh, in this case, we are looking at the west side, western sides of uh, Kenya, uh, which border South Sudan, uh, also bordering uh, Uganda. And uh, down there around Kajiado, we, we also border uh, Tanzania. And therefore, close, uh, cross border collaborations will be very important when you are looking at elimination of trachoma. Next. Yeah, in the uh, uh, border areas, we, are, uh, we have a special cross border populations. Uh, for example, where, as indicated there, we have the IDPs, uh, these are internally displaced uh, persons. Uh, remember, uh, uh, Kenya is a country that's uh, uh, affected uh, 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 a lot, and uh, we, end up, we end up having uh, internally displaced persons. Uh, then we also have refugee camps, uh, mobile populations. Uh, these are treated and monitored separately because of their uniqueness, uh, especially when we're looking at uh, um, at activities that are uh, aimed on trachoma. Now, in addition, uh, we also have porous borders and also insecurity persists because of keto wrestling and uh, availability of light arms in the border areas. Remember, these are countries that are, uh, for, uh, that are located in countries that are uh, at the, bo uh, uh, the border countries that are, uh, are not uh, very stable. Like when you look at uh, South Sudan at the border areas, and also, uh, when you look at the western side of uh, Uganda, you'll find that uh, because of the uh, uh, light arms in those areas, both Kenya and Uganda, you find that uh, those are areas that are, are not uh, easy to manage, especially when it comes to uh, public health interventions. Next. Yeah, we, ha we have uh, challenges when we come to implementation of Tacoma. Uh, like for example, when you look at uh, uh, when you look at uh, surgeries, uh, as, as some of the interventions that we conduct in those areas, uh, we also have an issue of antibiotics, and we also have, uh, have an issue of uh, F and A. On surgeries, uh, we usually have a minim minimal yield from uh, uh, static clinics uh, that are uh, established to carry out surgeries. Remember, trachoma can. Uh, can be managed by surgery, uh, whereby we do surgeries on the eyelids. Uh, and then uh, again on surgery, dealing with large numbers of, uh, uh, of screened, uh, cataract, uh, screened uh, cataracts. Also, we have a difficulty in case finding and refusals and poor surgical uh, outcomes. So to solve the, or to get around that, we usually come up with solutions whereby we have outreach uh, accelerated, and then we have a TT plus, and then we ask a case finder, uh, counselors and training to outreach those communities. And also we have documenting refusals uh, as uh, managed. And then we have a TT audits uh, to ensure that uh, we do uh, audits on uh, the outcomes 
of these uh, 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 surgeries. Now, the other component is on, uh, sorry, uh, on antibiotics, uh, we have a drought and uh, famine and insecurity in the distribution of these antibiotics. And uh, uh, we also have cross-border uh, migrations during MDA. Uh, and then we also have uh, to go around that, uh, we have proper MDA uh, timing, work with locals, and also cross-border uh, collaborations with other uh, countries uh, that border uh, Kenya and in those areas. Then uh, on F&A, uh, we have limited investments in uh, facial cleanliness and environmental, environmental sanitation and uh, behavioral change uh, communication. Then uh, another challenge is delayed implementation, uh, delayed implementation uh, of F and D, that's facial, uh, facial cleanliness and environmental sanitation, and then rigid uh, uh, cultural beliefs and practices. Uh, in addition uh, to, uh, to that, to go around that, we surely have a, a continuous advocacy uh, to wash a sector, uh, that is to, uh, to counter F and D and BCC, priority interventions in selected units uh, through community-led uh, total sanitation and school-led total sanitation. Uh, on the rigid cultural, uh, cultural beliefs, we usually go around that uh, by uh, carrying out BCC activities, which uh, in this case, uh, be able to change uh, communication activities. Next one, Jay. Next slide. Yeah. Uh, on that slide uh, is uh, shows uh, mass drug administration over the years, and uh, uh, like for example, in this case, uh, you can see the way we carry out uh, mass drug administration in the border areas, whereby previous treatment in border areas and the achievements uh, towards elimination have been number of surveyed endemic use were 53, and 21 have since reached the WHO threshold of TF for less than five percent in children one to nine years. Uh, areas that achieve that uh, threshold, uh, we shall don't treat, we shall consider them as having achieved the WHO threshold. Uh, and therefore we consider it on areas where the TF is greater than 5%. And uh, right now we, we only have 12 counties that has a, have a threshold of greater than 5%, uh, uh, whereby populations still require antibiotic interventions in about 1.9 million uh, people who are at risk or who are affected by, uh, by this disease. Uh, now we have planned MDS of the uh, 12 remaining five will be treated in February and March, 2023. Uh, like right now, I'm in an MDA in trachoma uh, of trachoma in uh, Kibish, that's Trukana County, that uh, which caters for, which covers Trukana North and Kibish. Uh, where we are conducting the March uh, 2023 MDA. Uh, other counties that will be treated later on are uh, uh, Tiati, uh, Kajiado Central, Kajiado West, uh, Kajiado South. Uh, all apart from Tiati are bordering Uganda and Tanzania. So when you look at uh, these uh, counties, you find that most of them are found on the border areas. And without collaboration with other counties, it may uh, become difficult to eliminate this disease or to reduce it to a threshold, which doesn't require any MDAs. Next. Yeah, that is a, a picture of uh, 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 Professor uh, Lonyangapo, uh, which who is a former governor of West Pokot County, taking a uh, place in an uh, MDA uh, during a joint launch with Uganda in Kachaliba. Uh, Kachaliba is found in West Pokot at the border of Kenya and uh, Uganda. Uh, Uganda, so in order to, uh, ensure the MDA is effective, we should uh, involve our leaders so that they can be able to uh, 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 encourage people to come for the MDAs to ensure that uh, we at least reach 100%, or if, even if not 100%, we, uh, we have a target uh, to reach 100% uh, to ensure that many people, as many people as possible, are, are reached by these MDAs, and that's why we involve leaders. Next. Uh, trachoma elimination as one, uh, using the one health, uh, one health approach. Trachoma is a disease of the poor uh, hygiene, uh, disease of poor hygiene and poor environmental conditions. That one we know is uh, what we know is that if we were to, uh, if we are to remove uh, to uh, reduce the prevalence of uh, trachoma, we need uh, to improve 
hygiene conditions in those areas because we know that uh, trachoma is a disease of poor hygiene and uh, poor environmental conditions. Uh, improvement of the water availability and clean environment, environment is integral part of elimination of trachoma. Uh, I think I've already uh, explained that. However, in the midst of water scarcity, drought, uh, poverty among the border communities, and climate change, trachoma elimination goal uh, targeted for 2025 seems uh, to be a challenge, uh, considering that, uh, that those are dry areas who are, uh, which are mainly affected by drought. Uh, uh, there's limited water supply. Uh, you find that uh, due to climate change, uh, 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 the communities are poor because uh, uh, being asked like in the recent dry season, most of the animals dead, and that is their source of livelihood. So we find that uh, these communities are affected by poverty and they cannot be able to access uh, clean water uh, because of the environment that they live in. Uh, so that's a challenge for uh, elimination of trachoma. How best can we conduct uh, cross-border synchronization? That's a, a subject for discussion uh, uh, for the uh, participants to say how can you uh, assist us to uh, increase cross-border synchronization in those counties? And then, uh, the other case uh, question would be what can we do to sustain facial cleanliness and environmental improvement as a lifestyle in the midst of water scarcity drought? How can we sustain facial cleanliness being a major component of elimination of trachoma? Uh, then how do you think the One Health approach can be applied to better address the challenge of trachoma? So that's, uh, uh, those are three questions for discussion uh, to the participants to see how we can uh, increase uh, uh, the way we tackle uh, this disease that eliminates uh, mainly the poor communities, the most remote areas where there's no water supply, affected by drought and uh, uh, where uh, uh, this uh, are remote areas that cannot be reached easily. Thank you very much, uh, Anjoy and uh, participants. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Yoko, for sharing with us um, the challenge that um, you'd wish this meeting to um, help you with. Allow me to just invite us to give him a virtual clap for that. Um, uh, we, we appreciate that you indicated that you are currently planning for an MDA. And so probably that's why there is probably a, a lot of um, uh, background, like a windy noise in the background and sometimes the uh, voice was fading, but then we got the gist of the, of, of the situation. So again, thank you, Kyoko. Um, members, ladies and gentlemen, kindly invite us to give him a virtual clap and appreciate the presentation that he has done. Um, and um, we now open up and invite um, responses to the questions that have been placed. So how best can we, how best can the team uh, conduct cross-border synchronization? And what can be done to sustain facial cleanliness and environmental improvement as a lifestyle in the midst of water scarcity brought about by climate change amongst the border communities? And how do we think the One Health approach can be applied to better address the challenge of trachoma? I open it up for discussion for the next um, five or so minutes before I invite the subject matter expert, uh, Titus, to say something. If you wish to speak, you can put your comment in the chat and you can as well um, raise your hand. I'm scanning to see whether there's any hand that is up and we'll invite you to unmute and um, make your contributions to, this, um, to, to these questions that have been placed, these challenges that uh, Kyoko has placed before us. Anyone wishes to make a contribution, remember we are in a community and we want to help each other out. We want to learn together. So I am really scanning to see whether there is any hand that is coming up. And I will also invite Mark to let me know whether there is any comment in the chat. Any hand that is up? Yes, I'm for the moment I'm scanning the chat. I've not seen any comments. So I uh, just invite uh, our colleagues to write through the chat uh, so that we uh, raise their hands to uh, share with us their experience. Yes, we want to learn from your experience. So 
kindly share. Thank you, Mark. Kindly share. All right, let me call on Nicola, Nicolas uh, Toku from Ivory Coast. Nicolas, um, we saw in the map that, um, you know, the, the African map is shrinking and uh, West Africa moving towards those sides are doing some great job in eliminating trachoma. Anything that you would wish to share from that side, Nicolas? Nicolas Toku. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> and unfortunately, it is in French. All right, so our French interpreters, Mark, um, would you pick that up what Nicolas has put in the chat? Yeah, Nicolas is just sharing with us that he's unable to get the translation. Let me just try to see. Uh, to follow in French and see how it is working. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Mark. And as um, you're doing that, um, uh, Dr. Gad Ruzaza has indicated in the chat that um, he can see how trachoma is a one health issue and handling the disease has to involve diverse stakeholders. Uh, Dr. Gad, would you wish to unmute and speak to that comment? Yeah, so, Sam, I've just realized that the uh, French translation is not working. Uh, can can check out with our translators to inf to be sure that our colleagues can follow us in French. Great, thanks, thanks, Mark. Doctor Gad, would you wish to unmute and speak to your comment? Yeah, uh, I I am amazed. I used to think that uh, trachoma is just an eye disease, but we know that uh, trachoma is associated with water scarcity. And usually, it seems to also to be related with uh, where we can locate uh, some of the largest uh, cattle corridors or animal corridors in, in, in Africa. Uh, so I do realize that, for example, environmentalists, water engineers, policy makers, uh, eye specialists, eye doctors, uh, and also I think almost everyone, community sensitization experts, because it's one of the diseases where a little bit of water on or put on our eyes daily goes so far in its prevention. So um, I, I, I think I've clarified the issue that I posted in the chat. Thank you very much for listening to me. Wonderful, Am amazing contribution. I'm, I'm glad to uh, take note of um, what, what you've indicated that um, there is a sentence that you've said that uh, it is also associated with the roots that cattle uses, eh? um, and and that's amazing because it also brings on board the you know one healthness, so to speak, quote unquote, about this issue. In addition to the fact that, um, of course, um, the environmental implications that have been given, um, calling on you know into into force and calling into implementation of the one health approach. Thank you, Dr. Gad, for the input that that um, you've made. Um, Anyone else wishes to speak to the questions that have been placed? We want um, to learn together. So kindly, if you have um, a contribution that you'd wish to make, um, you can use the raise hand function and we will uh, invite you to make your contributions. I'm scanning to see whether there is anyone um, raising their hand. Yes, uh, there's a hand that is up. Sakwa, Sakwa, Kamama, go ahead. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yes, uh, my contribution, of, uh, I was just thinking it loudly uh, in terms of One Health. Now, since we've seen this disease is common, especially among us pastoralists, because those, those, those are the areas that have been mentioned very commonly. And uh, these people are moving from one place to the other. Uh, due to the nature of pastoralism, where the owners, the animal owners are very close to their animals. I was just wondering, because also trachoma affects uh, uh, other livestock. So I was wondering, is there, is there any correlation? Are there any studies that have been done to check whether uh, when you're getting the owner, is there a correlation between having occurrence of uh, trachoma in humans and also uh, in the livestock? 
so that it, could, 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 could there be any, any correlation when it's occurring in uh, the livestock and also in the, in the persons taking of care of it. So I was just trying to extrapolate, is it also possible that uh, that close correlation with the animals? Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Sakwa. You have um, indicated that um, you're actually responding to question number three by inviting another question as well. Um, how do we think the One Health approach can be applied um, to better address the challenge? And now we are getting to hear from you as well that you're thinking um, within yourself uh, whether there's a correlation between what you're seeing in uh, humans and what you're seeing in animals. Um, we will take that question and probably put it in the parking lot for the next one or two minutes as we invite the SME um, to come on board and we hope that he's going to um, respond to that question that is, um, um, uh, you know, picking on your mind. Thank you so much, Sakwa, um, because that uh, that that is, um, is a good point that and a good observation that you've made. Let me see. Mark, anything else in the chat? Not yet. Not yet, Mark. Okay. Um, so I don't know whether Nicholas uh, Toko can tell us what um, they, they, they've been able to see in, in West Africa in a minute or so, as I invite um, the, the case presenter, sorry, the didactic presenter to speak to the case uh, before he will proceed to his presentation. Mark? I'm not sure if Mark can hear me. Somebody to give me a thumbs up that I'm still there. I probably could be the one who's not. We, hi, Sam. I can hear you. Okay. Did you get a response from Nicholas? Would would wish to hear from West Africa, the French side. All right, I guess not. So we'll ask uh, Nicholas to uh, put it in the chat and um, we'll get to um, you know, learn from what West Africa has done because we saw in the map that uh, that has shrunk, that uh, you know, trachoma uh, incidences have shrunk uh, around those sides. So with that, allow me to invite our SME, uh, Titus, to speak um, for a minute or two on the case that has been presented and share his thoughts on the challenges. And then we will uh, move on to our next uh, uh, presentation. Titus. Thank you. Thank you, Anjohi. Uh, and uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Titus Waititu. Uh, as uh, Anjohi has just stated, and I'm the trachoma focal point person in Kenya. So I'm happy with the perspectives that I've had on the three questions. So I'll just start with them, especially question number three on uh, Dr. Sakwa's uh, question on um, uh, why uh, has anything been done on uh, uh, the correlation between uh, trachoma and uh, the pastoralists, uh, the animals, the cows that they move with. Uh, and I'm um, happy. I think there are some ongoing research on that, uh, especially due to, we are all aware that uh, trachoma is zoonotic in nature and affects both animals and human. And uh, with that, I think uh, we also try and emphasize that uh, for us to really eliminate the disease, we also have to know of the burden of the disease in the animals. But it's something that I think right now is can only leave to the research field. Uh, at public health, we, we, are, we are just, uh, First, we are trying to take care of the disease that we can see. Then we go on and see other avenues how we can close the gap. Then also, I'm happy to have had the response from Dr. Gad uh, about the uh, One Health nature of trachoma, and uh, he's definitely right. From the vet department, from the security sector, from the water department, uh, teachers even in schools, they really are good agents where we use them for behavior change communication among the children. So 
a lot of stakeholders are involved in this, not only healthcare workers of all cadres, but uh, also uh, stakeholders from other sectors of the economy. And, uh, and usually uh, to emphasize on the vets and uh, the cattle routes, we are well familiar with them. We always say in the trachoma world, follow the cattle, then you know where those people are. We are usually even more interested in the cattle. And uh, for that, we'll need a lot of assistance from the veterinary departments uh, to, to really know where uh, we can get the people so that we can treat. On the other two questions uh, for WASH, uh, to sustain facial cleanliness and, uh, and, uh, uh, and sustain it as a lifestyle, mm -hmm. Uh, provision of water, provision of sanitation. Uh, at health, we that is not our mandate, that is not our role, and we are well aware of that. Uh, that's why what we do is just offer the software uh, of that component. We would not go and uh, uh, build boreholes, we don't build toilets anymore in our program. We just collaborate and uh, share with the stakeholders who are tasked uh, to perform that duty uh, to uh, go and uh, build those infrastructures in areas that are high in prevalence of trachoma and that we benefit from that. So our role there as a program is mainly on uh, uh, provision of uh, uh, software, we call them for meetings, we develop guidelines with them and uh, give them the data that they can use so that uh, as they are fulfilling their mandate, uh, uh, also we benefit as a program. And uh, on uh, uh, joint implement on, on, on successful synchronization, uh, in my experience, what I've learned is uh, have good joint planning meetings with uh, the neighboring country that you are planning to synchronize your mass drug administration with, then make sure that you have a joint implementation date, like similar to what we've been doing with our neighbors in Uganda and uh, Tanzania. And with that, we make sure that we do not miss anyone out in both sides of the uh, countries during uh, synchronized mass drug administration when we take care of the mobile populations and we take care of uh, uh, any disease that might be persisting or uh, in both sides of the uh, countries. So I think that's all I have on Joy. Um, take it back to you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Titus. Uh, we will give you a virtual clap and um, give you that indication appreciating um, the responses that um, that we've gotten. Um, and so with that, uh, with, with the wrap up from the SME uh, members, ladies and gentlemen, allow me then to transition us to the SME's presentation now, where he will be giving us um, the roadmap to trachoma elimination in Kenya um, and telling us what the country has been doing and what the, um, the, the achievements that um, we've realized as a country moving on. And um, I want to take this opportunity to invite Titus again to now speak to his presentation. Titus, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Andre, for inviting me once more. Okay, now uh, my name is Titus Waititu, as uh, earlier said, and um, the trachoma focal point person uh, from the Ministry of Health, Kenya. I'll give you a, a roadmap to uh, trachoma elimination in Kenya. Next slide, please. So uh, the disease is found in uh, poor rural areas of Africa, Asia, Australia, the Middle East, uh, Central and South America. Uh, that's where the disease is found uh, worldwide. And uh, as we say, it's not the disease that is neglected. It's one of the neglected tropical diseases is actually the people that are neglected. So that's why uh, you'll find the yes, and uh, it exacerbates even the poverty further. 
So in Kenya, the disease is active and prevalent in Turkana, West Pokot, Paringo, Samburu, Narok, Kajado, Meru, and Isiolo counties. That's where you find the active disease. Uh, but uh, in these other three counties that I'll mention next, that's Lakipia, M Embu, and Kitui, uh, there's no active transmission going on. But still, uh, we have the blinding form of the disease, which is uh, trichiasis trichomatis. These, uh, so there we don't carry out any MDA, mass drug administrations. We just carry out surgeries. Uh, we manage the cases that are progressing to blindness. And uh, we continue with facial cleanliness uh, campaigns and uh, environmental improvements and behavior change communication. Next slide, please. The pre predisposing factors for trachoma uh, are usually found in areas that are hot, dry, arid, semi-arid areas uh, with scarcity of water, poor sanitation, and the matter is further complicated by poverty. And we usually find the disease in young children and women. Uh, these are the ones who are mostly affected and blindness does not come at once. You, it's due to repeated and infections over the years. And it's very difficult to get someone below the age of 15 with um, uh, TT, that is a blinding form of the disease. Uh, you usually find 40 years and above, but pediatric uh, 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 TT are not uh, impossible, they are, but they are very rare, like one in a million. Yes. Next slide. So uh, the transmission is through direct contact with the uh, infected eyes discharge. And from the diagram, you can see when the children are young, there's the cycle of infections. They'll be infecting each other. And the green uh, arrow points to their pro uh, progression through life. So as they grow to teenagers, as they're taking care of younger children, they'll be infecting each other again. When they become mothers, the infection goes on. Uh, grandmothers to their grandchildren, to their daughters, to their other children in the community. And uh, that's how it goes on. So it's direct contact with the infected eyes discharge. And uh, the contact agents might be the flies uh, from one person to the other, fingers, formites. These are like uh, the lessos, the handkerchiefs, the towels, and uh, further complicated by family overcrowding. Next slide. Please. So this is how blindness comes along. The first picture on the upper left shows a typical eyelid with a TF. Uh, the uh, tra uh, trachomata uh, follicular stage. This is an active stage. You can see small uh, round uh, uh, whitish uh, dots, those are the follicles in the eye. And uh, usually the body self heals after that episode, but due with repeated infection, uh, it will get inflamed. And with time that inflammation will also heal. Then we move to the upper right uh, picture, you see a scarred eyelid. Uh, once the inflammation heals, the eyelid will uh, get scarred and uh, it will turn inwards. When it turns inwards, we go now to the trichiasis stage. Now at that stage, we can correct uh, through uh, the eyelid, the, the eyelashes, we epilate and uh, we can even conduct surgery. But at this stage, if nothing is done, the eyelashes will scratch the cornea of your eyes and uh, that will lead to irreversible blindness, cornea opacity, 
uh, once your eyelid is uh, completely scratched out, uh, at this point, I don't. Uh, there is no replacement of a cornea, so you will. Okay, You'll proceed to irreversible blindness stage. Next slide. So this is how we treat the disease. Uh, it's mostly done during mass drug administration exercises where we give uh, antibiotics to the whole community, uh, affected endemic community. And uh, this can be done once a year or two times a year, depending on the level of prevalence that is there. And uh, for children below six months, uh, we give tetracycline eye ointment, which you can see on the on the left. And uh, this is applied twice daily for between four and six weeks. Then for children, give uh, uh, Zithromax pediatric oral suspension uh, according to weight. Uh, but for field use, we use a uh, uh, dosing pole. So we use height as a proxy of weight. And anybody above seven years, we give tablets. Uh, these are three tablets. Anyone above 15 years, we give four tablets. Next slide, please. So prevention and management of the disease, uh, we do so by promoting good sanitation and hygiene habits through provision of clean water, uh, improved personal hygiene, and clean living conditions. Early treatment using M, uh, antibiotics, that is through mass drug administration, is important for the prevention of, complicate, of, complicate, of, of the disease complicating into irreversible blindness. And uh, surgery will also stop that progression to blindness. Next slide, please. So this is a strategy that uh, we, we use across the world, strategy uh, that uh, the WHO has uh, provided for us uh, to drive the disease to elimination. For those, uh, who have already interned uh, uh, eyelids and are at the TS stage, uh, we provide surgery. For those that uh, uh, communities that are affected, we give antibiotics, uh, which are donated by Pfizer to treat and prevent the active infection. And uh, also to aid with the antibiotics, we promote facial cleanliness to prevent the disease transmission. And you know, you cannot uh, uh, emphasize on facial cleanliness and infrastructure is not there. So that's where the E part comes, where we increase access to water and sanitation. So that uh, uh, where we are promoting facial cleanliness, we make sure that the water is there. Next slide. So I'll pause here for two questions and maybe ask uh, the audience, uh, what is the situation of trachoma in your country? And uh, have you ever seen or heard about trachoma in your community? So I'll take it back to Anjoy to take us to the poll. Thank you. Um, and sorry, Ken, uh, this is not the polling. Um, so this is just the first part. So I'll request that we pause on the poll. Let's pause on the poll, Ken. Thank you. So um, members, so the again, we mentioned that we'd wish to learn from each other. So the two questions um, on the chat. So what is the situation of trachoma in, the, in your country? And have you ever seen or heard about trachoma? in your community. So we'll invite, um, again, responses in the chat, anyone wishing to share in the chat, or um, put your hand up or using the raise hand function and share with us um, the situation of trachoma in your country 
or whether you've ever heard about it in your community. So I invite us to kindly engage. I'm scanning to see whether there is um, any hand that is coming up. Let me see whether there is any hand that is coming up. Um, if not, we will uh, invite somebody to volunteer to share with us what they have um, in their country. Allow me to ask, uh, uh, to put you on the spot, Millie Grace, uh, Millie Grace Akulu, if you may, uh, would you wish to kindly unmute and uh, share with us if you've ever heard of uh, trachoma in your community? Millie Grace? Mili Grace, are you there? Are you able to unmute? As I'm still scanning to see whether there is a hand come. All right. Yes, Grace, yes. Uh, I'm getting you. Um, do you pick me? Yes, we can hear you. My network is poor a bit. I've ever heard of a trachoma in my community, but uh, it is not uh, so common. Um, sorry that I've just joined uh, the discussion. I am in Lira, district in northern Uganda. Uh, I've ever heard of uh, trachoma, but it's a, it's not a, a common thing in uh, northern Uganda generally. All right. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So you've heard about it, but uh, you've never know, you, you've not come across it. Um, it's it's not common. It's not common in uh, northern Uganda. I've come across it. Uh, I've come across it, but it's not a common. It's not common. It's not ah. common within. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Millie, for allowing me to put you on the spot and taking up the challenge and unmuting and uh, sharing with us. We truly appreciate Thank it. You. Allow me to also put uh, Oscar Arak. Uh, my apologies if I pronounce your name wrongly. Um, Oscar, would you mind? Uh, unmuting and sharing with us your experience. Have you ever come across trachoma in your community? What is the situation in your country? Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, the moderator. Uh, my name is Araj Oscar. I am a student at Makerere University uh, doing masters in public health. Uh, from School of Public Health, uh, Makere. Yeah, um, as Mili has already alluded to that, I believe uh, since we already said it's a disease that is related to water scarcity, um, we'll appreciate that uh, generally, um, in particular the region where I come from, that is a uh, sub region. Um, trachoma used to be there those days, and um, majorly it was related to, um, I should say, poor standard uh, of living, where uh, mostly water sources that uh, we were using would dry. I still remember my mother telling me that. Uh, um, around 94, um, where we had uh, famine, uh, but it was also related to climate change, where there was a lot of drought. And um, so most of the kids actually had eye infections. And uh, they would, uh, this, this is, actually this trachoma would spread And wow. uh, majorly, you know, when children wake up, they wake up with uh, a kind of uh, a dirty high. And so flies would really love to uh, hover ar around. And uh, so it would move from one child to another, uh, spreading these high infections. I believe uh, it was trachoma. And uh, she just told me the eye infections were much then. But you can't compare to these days. Um, things have changed a lot. We have borehole. Uh, we have access to clean 
water, uh, especially underground water where we have like boreholes um, and also some uh, open wells, but of course deep wells. And I think access to water has really played a key role that has really reduced on the um, prevalence of uh, trachoma. Yeah, generally that's what I could say. However, I've had in the areas of uh, the greater northern Uganda, uh, I've had in the areas of, I think, Amudat, Karamoja, generally, that some of these diseases are still there. And I think we know what's up there. Access to water is still a problem. Yeah, thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar, for taking up the challenge to um, unmute and speak up. We've, we've gotten to learn from you that you also go to hear about it. Uh, you never interacted with it, but, um, you know, the stories, the generational stories that you had about it and um, you've witnessed the improvements that are, have taken place. Um, allow me to just invite one more person before I, uh, I look at the chat um, and read out what Dr. Gad has indicated. I'd like to hear from, again, if I pronounce your name wrongly, uh, forgive me, uh, Veronica Sanchez Barboza. Veronica, would you wish to unmute? Veronica? Veronica Sanchez Barboza, I presume then um, Veronica is not able to get to the mic. Um, one more one, um, Solomon uh, Berhanu. Solomon uh, Berhanu, would you wish to unmute and just share your experience with us? I presume Solomon is also not able to get to the mic. Okay, great. Um, thank you to our participants who've been able to um, share the experiences. Dr. Gad, we appreciate what you've put up in the in the chat, indicating that trachoma has reduced in Uganda, but is still prevalent in the Karamoja and other water hazard areas. And we've just heard from Oscar um, saying he has heard stories. <laughs> he has heard stories of um, um, what is happening in Karamoja related to um, trachoma. So you've just confirmed that as well. Um, it was a large problem during the 80s and 90s in Uganda and trachoma used to be the most common cause of blindness in Uganda during the 1980s. We'll probably later on, um, as we're getting to um, near the end of the session, invite you, uh, Dr. Gaz, to probably share with us some of the strategies that Uganda um, you know, put up to ensure that uh, that was a story, that trachoma is a story of the past. You've also shared that um, Dr. Keith Waddell and Dr. Kenneth Kagame did um, uh, lots of collaborative work in humans and animals animals have been largely neglected. Oh, Dr. Keith Waddell and uh, Kenneth Kagame did a lot of work in the human area, but the animals have largely been neglected. All right, great. Um, that gives us an opportunity uh, to engage as One Health practitioners um, to see what we can do in the animal health sector relative to trachoma. Um, Titus, allow me to hand it over back to you to speak to the comments that have been made, and um, you can proceed. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I've heard the comments and they are totally right uh, what Dr. Gada said and Oscar. Uh, trachoma prevalence was high everywhere in East Africa, Uganda, Kenya included, but now they've uh, localized, I think if I'm not wrong, I think they have uh, trachoma in about three districts, the Amudat as uh, Oscar has said and uh, Karamoja region, and maybe the one further westwards toward the border with DRC, I, I think is Balamuli or something like that. Uh, but as you can see, their problem is similar to ours. Uh, Karamoja borders Chukana, uh, Amudat borders West Pokot. So we, we, the, the, the disease was just there within the border. Maybe we treat in our side, uh, the population is in Uganda. Those population that get missed out and then bring back the disease and so on and so forth. So going forward, we do carry out the mass drug administratively, the mass drug administrations in a synchronized manner. Tanzania is a similar problem with uh, Uganda. The uh, prevalence is at the border with Kenya. Uh, uh, bordering Narok and Kajiado. The other side is Gorongoro and Longido. 
So it is just now the end game strategy for trachoma is cross border. Yeah. And uh, we task to take the one health approach, we look at the animals, we involve all stakeholders, uh, probably because that's a missing link. So we involve everyone and uh, uh, that will take us to elimination of the disease from uh, our countries. Thank you. So I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, talk a little bit about the safe strategy starting with surgery for trichiasis. In Kenya, we have done very well in surgery with less than three cases of trichiasis around the country. And with that, we've uh, told our partners that uh, the government can handle those uh, cases. Uh, plus anything that might come up, any progression from TF to trichiasis. So we've capacity build our surgeons in our, in uh, all around. And uh, it is now that the S component of SAFE has moved from a partner led uh, component to one that we are uh, administering or taking care through our uh, clinics, our static centers. Next slide. Uh, from the A component, that is uh, mass drug administration, antibiotic. Over the years, we had about 53 districts that were endemic. Uh, we managed from 2010 to, uh, uh, to remove 41 districts out of that equation that we managed to uh, bring the prevalence below WHO threshold, which is TF below 5% in children one to nine years. And uh, what is remaining is about 12 uh, districts. And most of them, apart from one or two, are along the borders with our neighbors. Like one that we are, as Dixon said, we are handling right now in uh, uh, the north that we are bordering South Sudan and uh, Ethiopia. And uh, the rest are uh, bordering either Tanzania or Uganda. Next slide, please. So this is uh, our project, uh, progress of active infection from 2010 to 2012. You can see the map has drastically changed from deep red color. Deep red represents uh, TF of, of above 50%. We had a district that's bordering Uganda and Southern Sudan had TF of 67%. Uh, that district still has trachoma, but it's in the range of between nine, 10, 11%. Uh, but we hope to, to bring it to, push down that prevalence this year to below 5%. Next slide. So uh, for facial cleanliness and environmental improvement, we solely rely on the One Health uh, approach to drive us through. Because at this point, uh, we use a trans a disciplinary network of stakeholders in the wash and NTT sector. Uh, as I had earlier said, uh, alluded at our role at the Ministry of Health is to provide treatment, the role of provision of water, provision of uh, uh, infrastructure for water lies in another ministry. So we make sure that we work very closely with people from the water department and, uh, uh, and, and try and influence and uh, try and uh, coordinate partners even in the water department so that we can benefit from the infrastructure that they lay out to the districts, to the counties. Uh, so as they fulfill their agenda of providing water, they also uh, fulfill our, our agenda of uh, eliminating NTDs need a lot of uh, FNE support. Then we have interministerial public uh, 
private and multi-sectoral partnerships, collaborations that we really uh, treasure so much uh, so that we can move our WASH and BCC strategies forward. Next slide, please. So our current interventions, we've uh, already rolled a framework that brings all the players together from the NGO sector, from the water sector, sanitation sector, and uh, this framework lays out uh, strategies that uh, and uh, agreements that will help us drive that agenda of water, sanitation, and hygiene for NTDs forward. We also are strong in behavior change and uh, uh, advocacy, where we are doing that, implementing it through the schools, through school-led total sanitation, using children as agents of change, having gamified messages in uh, uh, the games that we roll out to the school children. And these messages are to enhance or to change their behavior on uh, uh, open defecation, on washing their hands, washing their faces, and uh, also are strong in using the data that we get and uh, merging that data uh, of uh, high NTD prevalences to wash uh, coverage in areas. So we hope to achieve, uh, to get areas that have high uh, NTDs, uh, we uh, use that data to uh, like uh, 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 to advocate to the wash players to maybe put on more resources on wash in those areas so that we can bring up the wash indicators and with that we know as we've all agreed where wash indicators go up water coverage this disease just disappears on its own. We'll not need to cater for those other strategies like surgeries and giving antibiotics. Then we also host the National WASH and NTD Technical Working Group where we bring all these players together. Next slide, please. So I think here we'll move to the poll and uh, ask if your country has a national wash framework and in its framework, how uh, does it mention the One Health approach or does it, uh, is it encompassing all stakeholders? And uh, uh, up back to you, Anjoy. Great, thanks, Titus. So Ken, kindly launch the poll. Uh, there we go. So we'll do this in um, uh, in a minute. Uh, so participants, uh, members, ladies and gentlemen, so kindly um, give us your responses to the poll questions. Does your country have um, a WASH, a national WASH framework? And does it mention the One Health um, approach? Great, I can see some responses. We are currently wonderful. I can see some play um, in the responses that is happening. Great. Um, if we can be able to move to around we are currently at um, 12 responses if you can be able to get to around 20 or 25 that would be that would be wonderful so we're currently at 13 with um a few seconds remaining we're currently at um a few responses so participants kindly there you go if i get some five or six more responses then um we'll be able to pause and invite the SME to speak to them. So we're actually at 50%. If you can get this to around 60%, that would be amazing. So does your country have a national WASH framework? And does it mention the One Health approach? So I see the poll has stagnated at around 50%. There is no more movement. <laughs> So we'll give it another um, 10 seconds or so for anyone else who is thinking of, of, of an answer. 
we'll give it another. All right, so I think the poll is is stuck at that point. Ah, there's a, some movement has happened again. Okay, great. So with that, um, wonderful. We have gotten to the 60%, lovely. All right, so with that, allow me to invite um, uh, our SME to speak to the responses uh, that have been shared. Thank you again. Um, thank you again, colleagues, for um, giving us giving us your responses. So Titus, you can see the responses. Um, would you wish to comment on, the, on, on that? Yeah, yeah, uh, wonderful. Uh, thank you all for responding to this. Uh, I can see, yes, uh, most countries have, and yes, they do speak to the, the World Health approach. Um, that it's, uh, it's at 39, 39 actually a tie. But uh, I know uh, uh, most countries uh, have that framework and the main aim of that framework is to have a document uh, that is like an agreement between all stakeholders that this is the direction we need to follow because you can just speak with your mouth and you don't have a binding document to move forward and that document usually involves all stakeholders in the in the ntd like the ntd wash framework would involve most of the big players in wash and the big players in ntd so definitely even without mentioning it with the transdisciplinary or the multidisciplinary uh, level of uh, stakeholders that will be there, uh, definitely it's, uh, it's like a one health approach. It's only that it needs to be uh, uh, really highlighted uh, also. But thank you for uh, your responses and I'll take you back to Wanjoy. Sorry, thank you, Titus. Uh, participants, members, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for um, sharing the responses that um, you know, you've know you shared with us um, on, on the poll questions. We'll now proceed to um, the next uh, slide that we have from the presenter as we come to um, the end of this uh, didactic presentation and call for your discussion. So Titus, you can proceed with the next slide. Okay. So, so these are the main challenges that we have faced. Uh, drought, uh, farming, and insecurity. And with that, we've mitigated it with involving and working with the local administration and having proper timing of the surveys. We even go further and involve the metrological departments that can give us uh, maybe when we expect it to rain. And you know, that our people being pastoralists, when it rains, uh, you can even predict where our people will move to. So we work with all those sectors to ensure that. So there's rigid cultural beliefs and practices, use behavior change communication to counter that. There's inadequate facial cleanliness and environmental improvement activity. That's why we now collaborate uh, for extra resources and collaborate with other stakeholders in the wash sector using the One Health approach. Then the issue of uh, migratory population, uh, we do have uh, uh, concert, uh, uh, cross border efforts, and our MDS will make sure that they are synchronized with our neighboring countries. And for persistence and recrudescence of the disease, we do modify the strategies that we use so that we take care of that uh, challenge. Next slide, please. For the migratory population, uh, this is a major challenge that we've identified. Uh, in fact, it is um, the um, most, uh, we regard it as priority number one challenge and, uh, and it's what drives the persistence and recrudescence of the disease in all East African countries. And uh, that's why uh, for that cross-border efforts are underway in bringing on board all the sectors from the security sector, 
veterinary department, use even the immigration department, food relief and other relevant stakeholders. You'll ask why food relief? Because uh, if you want uh, uh, people, as we organize for mass drug administration, they'll be not as keen as uh, probably if you now tell the community that food will be distributed in a certain area. Like now in Trukana, there's some food relief going on due to a prolonged uh, drought that was there before the rains. And there was a drought response by WFP. And uh, we use them to mobilize uh, our communities so that when they are being given the food, we also give them medicine. Next slide, please. So here I'll pause again for two questions. Uh, that I think they're the last questions. And I'll ask uh, what are the challenges for trachoma control in your country? And uh, can you share strategies that you use in your country to overcome these challenges? Back to you, Anjoy. Thank you. Um... Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Titus. Um, we kindly request that probably it would be a bit difficult to share that in the in the polling. And so we request that then um, if you'd be able to share your responses with us in the chat, um, we'd be able to pick them up and, and read them. Thank you, Ken, for um, displaying the, the poll for us. Allow us to just request members if they can be able to share the responses in the chat to these two questions as we come to the end of that presentation. I take this opportunity to use the reactions and give Titus our SME um, a round of applause. And I request that we give him a round of applause as we also um, give our responses. Control in your country. And can you share some strategies that you use in your country to overcome the challenges that are mentioned? So, Titus, thank you for sharing with us. Um, uh, this presentation, sharing your expertise with us in this presentation. I I think I will uh, take a look at what uh, Dr. Gad has put up in the in the chat, speaking to probably these questions that we have. Um, and he indicates that uh, early work in Uganda was inspired by the Flying Medical Missionary Service, uh, ophthalmic diplom diploma ophthalmologist uh, with tool sets were trained massively. Departments of uh, ophthalmology were started and strengthened in both Makerere and Barara University Medical School. Research on uh, vitamin A was linked to trachoma control. Um, what else? The most success factor was building community-based eye work programs, mobile kits and mobile surgery and commuting health workers um, network. Community health workers network, I presume. Um, university research brought attention to the world and funding began to come in to fund IWAC. All clinical health workforce undertook a short course in IWAC. Wow, wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Gad, um, for, that, for that response. Thank you, Dr. Gad, for, for that response. Um, I, I, believe, I believe it is, it is um, that, that was some amazing work that uh, went into ensuring that um, Uganda uh, you know, uh, puts the trachoma under control. And I think there's um, something for Team Kenya to borrow from. Um, Titus, what do you say? Can you comment on that? Um... Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, that's a good, uh, uh, a good response. And uh, especially I love the part of uh, training of massive ophthalmic uh, staff. You know, those are some of the things we, are, we can borrow from and also implement here as well. Yeah and also integrating maybe the disease going forward with the vitamin A supplementation and related with other interventions uh, as an end game strategy. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, members, one last chance for any question or comment, a question to the SME or a comment that um, you can have, you have on the two questions. Great, somebody has uh, given a clap. Uh, who was that? Ah, Christine. Thank you, Christine, for the appreciation. Um, any comment or question to the... The next one, Mitch, I'm scanning to see whether there is... An... And Dr. Gad, allow us to just appreciate the contributions that you've made. Um, you know, that 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 uh, chart that you've indicated, um, like Titus has, has said, I think Team Kenya has something to take up um, from that. 
Wonderful. Okay, great. Um, so with that then, um, I wish to uh, pause at that, um, stop sharing my screen, and just appreciate each and every one of us, everyone in this um, um, session for the interactions that we've had. We've gotten to um, hear what other countries are doing. Uh, we've gotten to hear what um, uh, Uganda is doing, uh, and the strategies that they've put in place, the areas and you know uh, that um, trachoma has been eliminated in Uganda and the remaining bits that um, they are working on. Um, we truly appreciate, uh, we appreciate you for that. And I want to take this opportunity to appreciate our SMEs, um, uh, Titus and Dixon for sharing the expertise with us and just making this presentation. Um, thank you, uh, members, ladies and gentlemen, for the interaction. Um, like we said, this is a forum where we all get to learn from each other so that then we can make our communities all the better. Um, we are five minutes to the top of the hour. And before I invite, uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Gad. I like the, all right, great. Before we move on, um, Sakwa, Sakwa Kamama has a question. Um, how is the MDA done? Is it based on clinical cases? And do you think we may need to watch so that it doesn't lead to AMR, which is also a One Health issue? Good question. Um, Titus, do you want to respond to that in a minute uh, before I uh, I invite um, uh, Dr. Mark and before I invite Dr. Mark to say something? Titus? Yeah, uh, thank you. And thank you, Sakwa, for that question. Uh, MDA, we do conduct surveys in areas with us from baseline to uh, to, to, to inform us of intervention where we need to intervene. If the area has prevalence above five uh, TF, uh, children one to nine, then we conduct mass drug administration to the whole community, whole community uh, once a year. Uh, studies have been done on AMR, but not very intensive, but nothing very alarming has come out. But that's a very interesting area to look into. Those are areas that even in Kenya, we conducted up to 10 rounds of mass drug administration. That is from 2010 to now. So it's an area probably uh, uh, you can base your research on. Yeah. Back to you. Uh, Wonderful. Enjoy. Wonderful, thank you. An appropriate uh, conclusion to that. Um, I like the last sentence that you've indicated that that would be a subject of research. And I want to tie that with uh, what Dr. Gad has indicated that um, um, university in the in the chat, university research brought attention to the world on what needs to be done and pulled in a lot of funding. So I believe then there is the role of um, the university and academia coming in, taking up that um, challenge uh, on the research that you've actually mentioned, uh, uh, Titus, and seeing then uh, what you can be able to do to ensure that um, that whatever actions we are doing in the MDAs that we are taking do not lead again to AMR issues. So with that, thank you, Sakwa, for that final question and um, uh, Titus for the last um, comments that you've given us. Again, a round of applause to you and to this entire team, everybody. Everybody give yourselves a round of applause for uh, making this um, a worthwhile session. And so, like I said, we are two minutes to the top of the hour. And before um, we move on to Mark to give us the announcements. Um, I had seen the Afrohun Regional Program Manager online, and I just wanted to see whether um, she's in a position to unmute and just greet the plenary and make a, a comment or so in a minute. Um, Dr. Irene, I'd seen Dr. Irene. I don't know whether she's still there. Let me see. Ah, no, she's not, she's not there. Unfortunately, she's not there. All right. So with that, then um, allow me to hand it over to Mark to conclude the session for us. Again, thank you from me. Uh, Mark, over to you. Yo, so Sam, I gave first a virtual clap, but now you can see a physical one. So uh, congratulations yeah, to the team. This was really an exciting session and I really appreciate the team for uh, giving this wonderful talk and to you for sharing this very nice session. We are really happy to have all of you and for the interaction. This was really a very interactive session. Thank you very much and uh, congratulations to all of us. Yes, because this is a community and we are part of, of it, all of us. So thank you very much for uh, being part of this uh, great family and uh, being part of this um, uh, session. So 
on behalf of the community of practice, we thank you all for being there until the end and for sharing with us your experience. We, I can't uh, finish these remarks without thanking uh, the presenter, the case presenter and uh, the SME expert for taking time to prepare and to present uh, for us this very nice uh, session on trachoma. So let me thank uh, our colleagues from the Global Consortium, the ECHO team, and um, Jaber and uh, Mary, and all the team at the Afrohun Regional Secretariats. So thank you very much for being part of this. And we will be uh, getting in touch uh, to confirm the next session with Team Cameroon, for example. Thank you so much and goodbye. So there you have it, um, members, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking time. We wish you all a good evening and look forward to seeing you in the next session, which um, will be announced. Um, and we hope that then we can be able to again meet as a family, as a community and uh, continue advancing the One Health practice. For now, it's bye-bye. And uh, the organizing team uh, kindly uh, stay back. Thank you. <laughs>